I guess let's go ahead and get started. So before, before, before I tell you who I am, let's do a quick show of hands. How many of you are developers? How many of you are systems folks? The majority of systems folks. Um, how many of you are uh, parents? Cool. So a lot of you can identify. So again, my name is Joe Rodriguez. I am a member of the SysOps team at Puppet. And so uh, I do Puppet on a daily basis almost. So what I'm going to tell you is my, the title of my talk is How We Roll. Basically, what, what we do internally at Puppet. So everybody's familiar with Legos, right? This is something my, my, my child, my five-year-old built. And um, for those of you who are Lego buyers, they're expensive. Jeez. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, but what's even more amazing is how many Legos there are. Back in my day, uh, Legos, there was there wasn't too many different types of Legos, right? There were there were just a few blocks and a different uh, uh, maybe a few rectangular. But now you get wheels, now you get uh, uh, all kinds of crazy things, Star Wars, uh, Ninjago, you know, all these crazy things. But that's not the point. The point is, the reason why we're, I'll come back to this, but the, the reason we're here is, is to tell you how we do public at public. So, the good, the answer though is, um, we actually don't have, we, we actually don't have very many different problems in which you have today. Um, we have uh, an internal pass infrastructure for which we, for which our, our delivery and development teams uh, who, who build public are actually putting out system code. We have to maintain uh, that pass infrastructure. And on any given moment, you have anywhere about from three to 500 instances running at a given point in time doing checks across all these different operating systems all these different versions of Puppet. And so, yeah, we have, we, we're running a big infrastructure. In cloud, we have four different providers. We have Rackspace, GCE, AWS, and I don't know right now. Networking infrastructure, we're growing. We have a remote, we just brought up a remote office in London. Now, uh, we're, we're moving some of our, for redundancy purposes, we're moving some of our infrastructure into Colo. And so, that, um, our, we find that our that infrastructure, our public infrastructure is getting more and more um, uh, complex as we do as we move on. So, what are the goals of this, this talk? My goal is to want to kind of give you a high level perspective. Actually, we're going to do a lot of piggybacking on what Chris just said uh, uh, from UT. Um, and, and the thing, the, also, the, I, I want you to, to, to try to get you to learn how to think about implementing a Puppet infrastructure. My goal is not to show you Puppet, or to show you how to code Puppet, but rather how to, how to think about some of the things that you'll be challenged with. So, so here are the things we're gonna cover. Thanks. Remind me never to use GC or, or Google Present for a day. For a presentation, um, but engineering great modules. Um, how to do roles profiles? How to how to do Hira, uh, RTK dynamic environments, which, is, like I said, is incredibly incredibly powerful. Um, puppet workflows. Uh, how many how many of your like how what, what is the average size of your development teams? Like how many of how many of you here work on a team of five or less? How many, people, how many of you work on a team of 10 or more? Okay, so even with five people, there are challenges. Um, pro tips, some, some tips around uh, around facts and functions and public tools in the wall that you can definitely find useful. So let's jump into it, modules. Uh, so I found this on online, and I was, the reason I brought Legos up here is because at the end of the day, puppet infrastructure, puppet code is like Legos, right? You're putting things together that, that you know is going to do, that you want to, uh, to get working within uh, your system. So I Googled, I Googled uh, Lego uh, uh, schematics, 
this, this is interesting, popped up. A couple of things about this. So, look. <laughs> I been the guy who, who who invented Legos. I would have number one, I would have been rich. But two, I was like, wow. I mean, thinking through that, like, how, how how would you how would you you're constructing a piece of like a toy, a piece of plastic that is going to interconnect with other pieces of plastic to to make and build things. Hmm. Cool. So there's some design considerations. And the point of this is really how you connect Legos, right? Uh, to make something very interesting. More so, what's not being shown here, is specific to your infrastructure. You care about how the label looks, how big it is, how 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 it's going to uh, how it's going to plug in with other with other modules, right? So, speaking about modules, I mean. For modules specifically, uh, when you're when you're the key to any good public or great public infrastructure is the module. Modules are the lifeblood of your of your public code. Um, not all modules are created the same. And what, if I could provide you with any piece of advice, do not reinvent the wheel. Um, unless it's something very specific, I would advise you to take a look at the forge. Uh, take a look at, at GitHub. There's a lot of great uh, uh, modules that you can use and implement on your own right now that would that will bring your public code development uh, uh, would increase the speed of your public code development. And a good rule of thumb is that if you are developing a module and you need to develop a module, which sometimes for your infrastructure you have to, I wouldn't really if if it's if it's something beyond. Uh, a little beyond the normal uh, package file service infrastructure, I wouldn't. If I was you, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't spend time trying to again re-engineer uh, re the loop. Um, how many? How many of you know Ashley's um, Ashley Penny? He wrote. Uh, he works for public. He wrote a very, very, very good um, uh, document about how we, how to BGPM. Uh, um, Beginner's Guide to Public Modules. In that, in that, in that, uh, uh, in that document, he basically tells you like, if you have to engineer something that is a little bit uh, beyond the normal PFS pattern, go ahead and look at things like breaking up your code, like parameters, install, managing services. Those are things that you can control a lot easier, that you can control very, very easily uh, with public code. And it makes your it makes your modules extremely accessible. A perfect example of this a story: uh, PG Pool, PG Pool Two. Um, about a year ago, actually, not, about six months ago, our team was working on trying to um, to make. To, we're working on a migration for Puppet, uh, the Forge. We were taking it from Lightroom for a moment to GC. So what happened was is that within that, our engineers, our, our uh, apps engineers said, hey, we really need to make, we really need to make this, uh, uh, this infrastructure very redundant. Inclusive in that is our uh, database level. Um, so if, for those of you who, you who are big Postgres users, you may be familiar with PG. PG people allows you to do automatic failover of the database. And so, what it what it does is that you can you can you can implement it however you want. But the the basics are is that if a connection fails to a master server, it will automatically and reinstantiate the connection over to the master, automatically um, throw over the rails, and now traffic is going in a different direction. Therefore, providing redundancy. So I went first thing is I did is I followed my own advice. I went out to I went out to the forge that was building there. I went out to GitHub and find it. So now I'm thinking, okay, so how do we implement this thing? So the next thing I knew, I was finding myself, I was writing the model. The first thing that I had to, that I reverted to, was to Ashley Penny's uh, Beginner's Guide to Public Modules. From there, there's a link, you can go check it out. We, uh, in, we basically engineered a, a PG pool uh, module that now everybody can use. And we try to make it as, as extensible as possible. 
those profiles. Now, I mentioned that modules are the lifeblood of your puppet. Without modules at the very base, without getting them right, it's gonna be very hard to build a, a, a pretty valid infrastructure. Why? Is that what you'll find is that you'll end up in a, a spaghetti code type situation if you're not careful. So roles and profiles are a way for you to separate your business logic from your technology. Basically, um, buys you a logical way for you to group your modules such that it makes sense to the type of, of, of uh, servers or type of infrastructure that you're trying to deploy. And I'll give you an example here in a second. It adds a, a complete level of uh, uh, organization to your, uh, your code, and it's basically uh, an architecture paradigm. For you devs who raise your hand, and who, who remember an MVC uh, file pattern or, or development pattern. It's actually kind of very compared, uh, in compared to that or analogous to that. Um, because it allows you a way to you can control your code. So here's a role. This is actually a role that I wrote this week. In this role, you can see that I am using several different profiles. The top one, the profile server, this is actually a piece of code that's in production. Uh, the top one is Profile Server. That is where we handle all our base classes that we're implementing. Um, SSH, uh, being the keys that we deploy, uh, anything that you can imagine that are inclusive in that base class. After that, we start to get a little bit more specific. Kilcom Web um, is, is a, a generic module, or a generic top level module, if you will, that includes um, some information for um, for that particular profile or, or that particular type of infrastructure, like setting an OTP, uh, setting setting up the type of users that can that can access that uh, that infrastructure. Uh, the rest of those are pretty kind of small profiles. Uh, Drupal tools, deploy. Uh, those are those are very specific tools uh, profiles that, that are that are part of that Drupal. We run Drupal for our puppetlabs.com. So those are specific tools that we use at Drupal. The cool thing is, is that our puppetlabs.com infrastructure, we set it and we forget it. Our app developers, they'll go in and they deploy at will. That's what you want. And that's what this type, this is type of paradigm or the roles profiles, that's what it buys you. Is that uh, it allows you to set things up very clean such that you don't have to go and mess with it. Um, the Pilcom uh, uh, Pcash is uh, our, just a profile that includes Varnish as our, our caching system. Uh, and then Pilcom Web is, is specific implementation for Drupal. I'll show you that now. So this is a, this is a profile for Pilcom Web. As you can see, it pulls in information directly from Hyrule. We're going to talk about Hyrule and how you should drive. I think we're very at least our, our the ops team at Public Lab is kind of very opinion about everything should be driven by data. So here we pull in this data and we set some defaults. And we say, hey, if you know, pull in pull in this variable profile public apps or PLCOM, web, web domains. Consume that, if you don't find it, then set it as undefined. Uh, one of these one of those things here, sanity checks. Um, one day, if I could provide you another uh, piece of advice, learn to love your facts, as Dave mentioned earlier. Learn to love your functions. Standard Live is, is, is one of the primary reasons we wrote this. Standard Live on Puppet allows you to sanitize a lot of stuff. And you know what, it's pretty kind of interesting because a lot of, a lot of Puppet uh, developers that I talk to uh, or just getting started don't really do this type of practice. You know, when you're writing code, you want you want to do some sanity checks all the time. You're checking your you're checking your variables. You're checking different parts of code to make sure that that it works correctly. But you know what? I don't think you're going to do it at all. So uh, I would advise you to to learn to love your uh, your um, standard line functions. Hi, Rob. So I mentioned to you. 
us at Puppet and at, at Puppet Office of the Pride and everything that they do. And there's there's two two different schools of thoughts uh, for the most part. Is that if you don't watch it when you uh, so you can get pretty granular as to far how far you can you can uh, use Hira to drive to drive uh, variable specific information into your uh, profiles. If you're not careful, then what you'll find is that a lot of competitive data is included in YAML all over the place. And so, one of the hidden features that I think, and I think that, uh, that Chris touched upon, was um, that you can group, Hyra provides you a way to group uh, data such that it makes sense across particular um, particular uh, uh, environments. And we'll get to a portion of that now. You gotta promise not to show me. You gotta promise not to tweet this. You gotta promise not to sell this to anybody. This is our YAML file. Now, this is our high rate data file. Don't say nothing. I can do it for No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is our YAML file. Basically, it does is that it's, it says that um, we have this notes directory in our Hira file system under Etsy Puppet Hira. And what it does is it looks at it looks at a specific domain of a particular node. If it, if it finds the FQDN for that for that node, it will use the hybrid uh, the, the FQDN.yaml for that, and so on and so on. It goes through stage to us that variable stage. It's a particular type of environment. We have us at Puppet. We we standardize on a naming convention. And you can do this if you want. But what we did is we said, okay, our nodes, we need to find a, we need to find a way that's repeatable for our nodes. So what we do is we we set we set group, we set uh, a group dash, um, and then we have a placeholder in the middle, um, and then we set stage. Really what that means is that any, any node that we name within Puppet is set as, as a type, for instance, pl.com, I would, I would give it pl dash, if this was a web server, it would be web server one dash state, if it was a state server. So this way, now this falls in line with, with our high road definition here. Because all, all high is doing is looking at, at facts, right? And it's pulling in the stage, and in this case, the stage is prod, de, uh, prod dev or, state, uh, or, or, or stage. Um, domain, again, domain is another fact. Group, I mentioned that it's a particular type of group that represents. We have Forge, we have PL.com, we have X. Um, yeah, always download, you can follow those. I mean, but this is basically the, uh, our secret sauce for hierarchy. R10K, something that, that Chris mentioned. For those of you, do any of you know Adrian Debo, Debo or, or Red is Bob or I'm curious if you know nobody? This guy is kind of crazy. He's 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 a he's he's, he's he's pretty awesome. I call him, uh, I, I refer to him personally as a mad scientist. This guy's brilliant. Um, he came up with a creative way for you to to map uh, environments, as Chris was saying, map environments such that you can, it speeds up your development incredibly. This is how we do it in public. Um, it is the only way, in my opinion, I have not seen a better way to do this, that you can stay agile. For those of you who are in a group of five, for those of you who are in a group of 10, you know, you have X number of projects that all of you want to get done. At Puppet, there are 15 of us in, in the operations group. Of those 15, Five are dedicated to networking. The other five are dedicated to applications. Uh, another five are dedicated to infrastructure. And the way we manage our our, 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 our projects is that everyone needs the ability to be very agile, to be able to check out public code, to work on it, to get it into uh, and to get it committed back into. Uh, uh, the repo such that all it takes is another member of the team to get a, um, a pull request, 
and then and make sure that it's tested, and then it gets deployed. So let's look at that. One of the things Chris alluded to that we already do is that every piece, every every piece of code, whether it's a module, anything that's included in R2K, the R2K includes is a repo onto itself. It's even stuff that we didn't write, that we consume. It's, you know, I mean, you can see from there. The reason I brought this up is that R10K gives you, basically it implements a uh, uh, public library. And it pulls in a, a, pu a public file that is based on the public library and allows you to pull, it make, allows you to make a reference to a Git repo for a specific module, um, to a specific, you, know, you can pin it down to a specific shell, or you can pin it specific uh, um, tag. Um, this, this slide is cut off, I'm sorry. It's basically, these are other things that you can, can look to and then try to implement in your public code, or, 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 or utilize the public, public query. As, as we all know, uh, PE is uh, public data, public DB comes with PE. We also utilize it internally. Uh, as our central repository where, uh, where all where we can paint uh, all the assets that are being tracked by public. So you can query, you can actually query public DB. Eric Delane has modified wrote uh, 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 public query tool, <coughs> excuse me, that allows you to to um, look up specific uh, um, public runs and get an idea of all the assets that are there. One of the things that we use or have used is the Puppet Dashboard. And not so much the Puppet Dashboard that you're thinking about FOSS. Uh, this is uh, another tool that was written. I got a link for it. Um, but it's basically a quick way for you to uh, check the Puppet runs to make sure that they're running correctly. It gives you an idea of what assets uh, um, uh, Puppet is keeping track of. And then you can run those very, very quickly. So here's some other things you can do. Again, it's cut off, I apologize. I'll, I'll get these up on, on GitHub for you guys to look at um, a little bit more clearly. But you know, beyond that, we don't do anything special. We do the very same things that you should be doing, like linting, like uh, uh, validating our code. <laughs> if I can buy, offer you another piece of advice, validate your code before you push it, because I tend to be working very hard on something, and then I'll end up, all you want to do is get it into production, and get it, you know, get it checked in, make sure it, uh, 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 have it looked by somebody, and when you go to test it, it fails. And if you were just to do a uh, public partial validate, no, you know, nine times out of ten, you'll, you'll find it that um, you were able to, to not go through the headache. Uh, smoke testing, public apply, no op, obviously you guys know that. Um, here's some other tools that you can use. RSpec public, it's been mentioned here today. Uh, Beaker RSpec. How many of you know about Beaker? No? No takers? No? Um, the module team at Public Labs, uh, inclusive uh, Hunter Haugen and Alice Nobleman, have done some incredible work on uh, what we call Beaker RSpec. Um, what, this, uh, what this framework allows you to do is to test your public, test your public code. Bring up an entire system, whether that's in Vagrant or, uh, or got, I think it even has hooks for for GCE, and I think it has hooks for AWS. I need to go look at it. Honestly, I have not looked at it a little bit. What it allows you to do is, is, is test your public code from scratch and run it end to end on, um, on any particular platform. Uh, that is supports, and what that buys you is that now you don't have to go do your testing. Right? You, can, you can implement CI, or you can, you can implement CI. You can use uh, CI tools to with Beaker to to do your testing for you. Incredibly powerful. Um, this this screen was cut off, but it basically says in terms of hardware, if you're if you're running a decent sized public infrastructure. Anything beyond, that's why I was asking you how many, how many nodes you have. If you're running anything, I would say three, four, five hundred 
be sure that you size your boxes or your puppet instances correctly. Right? Why? You better know why. Because it will slow down. It will come to a brawl. But remember, what, what puppet what puppet server is doing, whether that's awesome, whether that's PE, is that it's taking a, taking uh, your puppet code, compiling it into a catalog, and then serving it out to uh, to instances. So what will happen? Even if there's play, if you have a lot of notes calling the puppet server, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna slow down. Um, something that we learned hard. So this. It's basically a summary. What this is is that the more time you spend doing public, right, in the day it translates to dollars, right? It translates to the time spent that in any dev could be doing something else. Um, quick recap, strive to engineer great modules. I can't I cannot stress that the most. As your base, you should take a look at that that uh, that uh, puppet uh, beginner's guide to to engineering modules. Um, use roles profiles, use Hira, and learn to love RTK. One thing I didn't mention of RTK, so here's a workflow. I mentioned that we have 15, 15 engineers. When I go to check out something, I take I take a branch of production, I make I make I branch a branch production, then I commit my I, I work on that branch, I commit it to I commit it to um, to the repo. Then I tell, then I go to the puppet server and I say, puppet server, update, update, uh, pull, pull, pull all the code from the repo. And then I go to this, to the, the instance that I'm working on that I that needs to use that branch, and I say, puppet, uh, puppet agent dash t environment that repo main done. That's my decision. It makes it super duper duper quick. So if there's anything that I can offer you. Learn to love our community. So, with that, that's all she wrote. Uh, are there any questions? I know it's been a long day, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. screenshot here. Um, you can do it any way you want, you can use ours, but you can, what I meant by that was engineer your, your hierarchy, a hierarchy file, your configuration file such that it makes sense to your organization, and then use that, all the facts that are associated with, with uh, the information that you're collecting from your notes, and then you can, you can apply that to your hierarchy file. It's, it's, I know, right? It's, it's really dependent on uh, your implementation. You can, you can be as creative or not as possible. That makes sense. Cool, thanks. Enjoy the drink.